Hi everyone. Today I'll take you through the third chapter in the textbook Thought Thoughts of Our Times. The title of the chapter is What Secularism Is and Is Not and the chapter is by Romila Thapa. Romila Thapa needs no introduction. She's a very famous historian. This is Romila Thapa. Some of you might have read some of her books or at least you might have seen a few in the library. She's a famous historian and these are some of her books. The Past is Present, Forging Contemporary Identities Through History, Romila Thapa. Gazing Eastwards of Buddhist Monks and Revolutionaries in China, Romila Thapa. The Penguin History of Early India, a very famous book from the origins to AD 1300. So these are some of her books. And the chapter that we are learning today, what secularism is and is not, is actually part of a speech that she delivered in 2015. Okay? So here it says, in her lecture, she talks about Indian society and the idea of secularism. And she defines Indian secularism and the colonial view of religion and its place in Indian history. She also explains the importance, importance of sects, the arrival of Islam, and finally concludes with her views on the task of secularization. So she talks about, you know, what exactly secularism is in India, because we call ourselves a secular country. So she tries to define and she takes us through terms like secularism, okay, in the form of questions and answers. So I hope that model will be more useful to you, because that's exactly the way uh, things are going to turn up during the during your exam so that's a way um, you can practice for your exam uh, i know a lot of it, uh, education right now is online so you must be constantly staring into the screen so once you go through this the rest of the time you can actually just listen to what i am reading out okay so you can just listen to it. You can increase the speed probably of the video and just listen to it so that you really don't have to look at the screen and read all the time. Okay. So that's also one way of learning. You know, online education has to be in a different mode. It's not like, it's not how you read a book. You don't have to constantly read it. You can listen to it, you know. So you can do that too. So the entire text has been converted into questions and answers. And make sure you listen to it a couple of times and you get all the uh, ideas right. So let's uh, go to the chapter. So the first question here is, so chapter 3, what secularism is and is not by Romila Thapa. How does Romila Thapa explain the term secular? Okay, that's the first question. According to Romila Thapa, Secular is what relates to the world religious. Okay, nothing to do with religion. It is different from religion. So that is what Romula Thapa means by the term secular. The next question, is secularism a denial of religion? All right. So we often say India is a secular country. So does that mean that we are denying the existence of religion? Don't we care about religion at all? So the answer is, that secularism is not the denial of religion, all right, but a curtailment of the control that religious organizations have over social functioning. So what exactly is secularism? It is a control that, um, that the state has over religious organizations, okay? So religious organizations are not given all sorts of rights over social functioning. Religious organizations or religious ideas have certain limitations. That is meant by secularism. And secularism does not mean that we are denying religion. In no way in India are we denying religion. But we have a control over religion. All right. So and um, you know how the religious bodies function is controlled and how the religious organizations control social functioning is curtailed all right it is uh, curtailed means what it is um it's controlled actually it's um it's brought under certain limits 
all right it's it's brought under um, certain um, limits um, there are certain boundaries there are certain fences beyond which religion should not go okay the next question when was the term secular first used so remember the year 1851 the term secular was first used in the year 1851 what did it describe then it described laws relating to morals and social values as having been created by human society in order to ensure the well-being and harmonious functioning of the society. So the word, the things you have to remember is the term secular. It was first used in 1851. It described laws that related to morals and social values. All right. And it was to ensure the well-being. Okay the well-being and harmonious functioning of the society. All right. The next question is, do civil laws require sanction of any religion? All right. So there are many civil laws um, in our country. So do these laws, do civil laws actually require sanction um, of any religion okay so the answer is as civil laws are sanctioned and upheld by the secular society they do not require san sanction of any religion all right so civil laws are laws so civil laws are laws um, should there be a rigid barrier between religion and state Okay, so should there be a rigid barrier between religion and state? And the answer is no. There need not be a rigid barrier. Put an A there. There need not be a rigid barrier between religion and state. Religious authority can continue in the secular system of a state and there must be a principled distance between them. That's all. Okay, there must be a print in the secular state. There must be a principled distance between religion and state. It does not mean that religion and state must be entirely separate. All right. That's not possible. That will not happen in a secular state like us. But there will be a principled distance. The state should not allow any single religion to dominate or influence its functions. That's a key point. All right. The state should never allow any one religion or any religion for that matter to control it entirely, to control its functioning, to control how it makes laws, to control how it takes care of the society. That should not be done. Okay, so religious authority can continue in a secular system of a state and there must be a principal distance between them. The state should not allow any single religion to dominate or influence its functions. Now, we will try to answer some other questions in a slightly bigger way. Okay, uh, maybe in 100 words or more. So there the first question is, according to the author, what do we first need to do? If we want to be part of a secular society so what should be done if we want to call ourselves a secular society if we want to be part of the secular society what is to be done according to Romula Thapa if we want to be a part of a secular society we would have to stop identifying ourselves primarily by religion caste or language and start thinking of ourselves as equal citizens of one nation both in theory and in practice. Other identities such as religion, caste, language and region should inevitably become secondary. Okay, so how, um, when is it that we are going to be a secular society? So according to Romla Thapa, if we want to be part of a secular society, we would have to stop identifying ourselves primarily, you know, on the base of religion or caste or language but and think ourselves as a nation all right so if we are secular if we are secular we do not think of our religion first we do not think of our caste first we do not think of our language first we do not think of uh, our region first okay we think of ourselves as a nation that's when we call ourselves a secular country 
all right other identities such as religion caste language and region should inevitably become secondary the next question in a society how should laws and social rules be observed so how are laws and social rules to be observed laws and social rules in a society should be observed because they bring a certain order and safety in a society it means that laws and social rules must be observed because they are laws and social rules not because uh, they have any divine uh, sanction or because uh, it has any divine authority or anything like that all right so laws and social rules in a society should be observed because they bring certain order and safety in a society they need not be observed uh, they need not be observed they uh, be, because there's a, there's a need for a because there okay they need not be put a because here okay here they need not be observed because they carry any divine sanction. All right. Laws and social rules in a secular society does not have any religious importance. They are the product of rational thinking, debate and discussion. The third question. Explain what Thapa means when she says the observance of the law is strengthened when people understand its purpose. So what does she uh, what does she mean when she says observance uh, of the law is strengthened when people understand its purpose? In a secular society, laws are not the outcome of divine sanction. Laws are not the creation of divine authority, nor do they need any divine sanction. Laws were made through reasoning and sensitivity for the protection, protection and safety of the members of the society, and they upheld values of tolerance and social responsibility. Such laws and its observance are strengthened in the society when people understand that they are made for the protection of the society and not because it has a validation of some divine being. Okay, so the question and the answer chala. Romila thapar parayin under the observance of law is strengthened when people understand its purpose. I need to explain to you another parayin under. Actually, in that I need to explain to you another. Because Romila thapar parayin under. ആൾക്കാർക്ക് ലോയിൻ്റെ പർപ്പസ് മനസ്സിലാകുമ്പം അവർ തനി അത് ഒബ്സേർവ് ചെയ്യും എന്നാണ് ഓക്കെ കാരണം നോക്കിക്കേ ഇതിനകത്ത് പറയുന്നത് സച്ച് ലോസ് ആൻഡ് ഇസ് ഒബ്സർവൻസ് ആർ സ്ട്രെങ്ത് ഇൻ ദ സൊസൈറ്റി വെൻ പീപ്പിൾ അണ്ടർസ്റ്റാൻഡ് ദാറ്റ് ദ ആർ മെയ്ഡ് ഫോർ ദ പ്രൊട്ടക്ഷൻ ഓഫ് ദ സൊസൈറ്റി കാരണം ആൾക്കാർക്ക് ഒരു പോയിന്റിൽ മനസ്സിലാവും ലോസ് എന്തിനുള്ളതാണ് ഇറ്റ്സ് ഫോർ ദ പ്രൊട്ടക്ഷൻ ഓഫ് ദ സൊസൈറ്റി ഓൾ റൈറ്റ് നോട്ട് ബിക്കോസ് ഇറ്റ് ഹാസ് എ വാലിഡേഷൻ ഓഫ് സം ഡിവൈൻ ബീങ് ഏതെങ്കിലും ഒരു ദൈവം പറഞ്ഞുകൊണ്ടല്ല ബട്ട് it upholds the values of tolerance and social responsibility all right so laws are there to protect us namukku thanne manasilavumbo we will try to follow the laws and not break it right that's what she say next question how does romila thapar define the term secular secularism and secularizing all right so this is probably uh, you know the beginning of the chapter and these terms you should know um, th there are minor very small differences between these terms and it's better if we understand it okay so how does romila thapar define the terms secular secularism and secularizing according to romila thapar secular is that which relates to the world and that which is distinct from religious okay religious allatha karyangalana secular ennu parayunnathu secularism endana secularism involves the questioning involves a question involves questioning madhi kato involves avanda involves questioning the control that religious organizations have over social institutions although so secularism ennu parnal endana it is a questioning you know of the control that religious organizations have over social institutions social institutions in a part of the religious organizations no la control na question cheyindana secularism ennu parayunnathu also secularism does not deny the presence of religion in society it identifies with social institutions um which religions can or cannot control okay secularism ennu parayunnathu it is not the denial of religion but it identifies which social institutions religion can or cannot control endokka social institutions na religion na influence cheyam influence cheyan paadilla ennulla oru understanding aanu secularism nu parayunnathu now secularizing nu parney endana secularizing nu parayunnathu secularizing is a process 
okay secularizing is a process by which society changes and recognizes how much control religion can have over the social institutions of a society secularizing or a process on it is it's a process by which society changes and recognizes how much control religion can have over social institutions of a society the word or term whatever what were the implications of the word secular when it was first used the term secular was first used in 1851 when it was first used in 1851 it described laws relating to morals and social values as having been created by human society in order to ensure the well-being and the harmonious functioning of the society so in the secular um, it described laws relating to morals and social values which were created by human society all right for the well-being and harmonious functioning or a human society nannayittu function cheyan vendi aa society thanne common sense inu undakkiya laws ne aanu secular ennu aadyam parnadu okay so that's it for now i think there is uh, one there are one one or two more questions perhaps Okay, so these laws, that is um, the secular laws, these laws were neither created by a divine entity nor it needed any divine sanction. The next question, discuss the importance of education in relation to independent thinking. So what is the relationship between education and independent thinking? It's just a common sense question. Education allows people to debate and discuss. It encourages logical thinking and reasoning. Education does not to make a person depend on blind faith or belief to arrive at certain conclusions, but encourages them to use their own logical faculties. In this way, education encourages independent thinking. So education is not something that asks you to believe. It uses thinking and reasoning, logical reasoning, thinking, common sense and so on. And so it really does not depend on blind faith. Okay. So in that way, education allows independent thinking. How are social laws significant to society? Social laws are the spine of a society. They protect the right to live and they ensure that there is no discrimination that affects life and work of people. Social laws are necessary in activities like registering birth, marriage or even divorce, process of education by which a child is socialized into society, occupation and employment, and inheritance generally of property. Actions linked to these come under the jurisdiction of civil law. Social laws provide the basic aspects of welfare in a modern state to members of society, irrespective of religion and caste. You know, the, these social laws are things that, you know, govern a lot of um, our life, like registering birth or marriage or education or employment and things like that, all right? So such laws are very important and these laws actually protect the right to live and they ensure that there is no discrimination that affects life and work of people okay social laws are not religious laws all right so that's the significance of social laws comment on the relationship between religion and state in some places the power of religion parallels that of the governing authority so the question is what's the relationship between religion and state in some places the power of religion parallels that of the governing authority the state in a secular state religion does not interfere 
with governance. The state does not give any special preferences to any particular religion and the state has laws that does not depend on divine sanction or divine authority. Okay. So that's the end of the chapter. Please um, listen to this again and make sure that uh, you learn these questions and answers well. I'm sure with um, all these questions and answers, you'll be able to write a proper, frame proper answers to any question that actually um, comes for your exam. And when you have time, um, do read the text too. So thank you very much.